cheeky cheeky modulus question. Find the values of x such that this inequality uh, is the situation. Now, any question to a modulus solving, you should be drawing a sketch. Modulus functions have a V shape. A modulus around it means that it's going to have a, well, I just said that, a V shape. Now, the way you basically draw these super quick is you just make this equal zero. That tells you where the vertex is. That's the same as completing the square with quadratics. What's inside the bracket basically tells you the X value of where it uh, has the turning point, right? Now, when you make that equal zero, you get minus three over two. Then you just draw a V shape. Okay. This part of the line is obviously 2x plus 3 because it's a positive gradient. This part has a negative gradient, so it's the negative of this. The modulus basically took all the negative parts of the line and reflected it up. So this would be y is minus 2x minus 3. It's the negative of all of that. This crosses the y-axis at 3, yeah, because of the plus 3. And then 5 is over here. So what we need to do first is find the x values of where these two graphs meet. So the first one, we're just gonna say five equals minus two x minus three. This one is when five equals two x plus three. Uh, bring that here, minus the five, so we get two x is the positive five on the other side is minus eight. X is minus four. Here we're gonna get two x is two, x is one. It wants to know, when is the V below 5? Here's my V. Where do you see it being below 5? Above, 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 equal, below, 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 equal, above. So it's this part here, is when the V is below the line. Those are these X values between minus 4 and 1 and it can't equal because of the inequality. Nice. At first, solving these modulus style questions, particularly this one looks kind of strange. You have four X mixed with the modulus function and we want to make it equal to one. How do we do that? Well, it's actually easier than you think. All you need to do is move the four X over and just change the problem slightly. We're solving this is one minus four X. Now, how do we solve all modulus function questions? We need to draw a diagram to make sure we are solving with the correct uh, functions. Now, how do you draw this really quickly? All modulus functions like this are in a V-shape. You just work out where it crosses the X-axis first by just making this equal to zero. That's minus two thirds. There's gonna be this V-shape, okay? Now we just need to write down the equations of each line. This is the positive gradient, so it's just gonna be three X plus two. That has the positive gradient. This is gonna be the negative of that, because yeah, that was the reflected part. So minus three X, minus two. Now, one minus four X, perhaps we should write down this point, which is two, because one minus four X is only gonna cross the axis here. Now, minus four X is really steep compared to minus three X. So this gradient here, which is gonna go through this point, so that gradient, we're gonna make it steeper. So that way we know that actually, there is only one solution here. And this is why we must draw the diagram. So we're only solving when one minus four X meets 3x plus 2. So this comes here to make 7x. The 2 comes over to make minus 1. Divide by 7, x is only minus a 7. Nice. Lidl were moving crazy with this one. One of their questions uh, to become a baker there. Use x equals 2 cos u to find the exact value of this integral between 1 and root 2. Alrighty then. The first thing I'll do is I'll be trying to change dx into du. So we're going to differentiate. Now cos u differentiates to minus sine, so we get minus 2 sine u. Then I'll be doing the limits. So we're going to be obviously be subbing this in into here, but let's do the limits as well. Limits. So what we sub it? So these are your x limits, right? We want to find the u limits. So when x is root 2, we're going to get root 2 is 2 cos u. Which when you divide by 2, you get cos u is root 2 over 2, u is pi over 4, and then with 1, 1 is 2 cos u, divide by 2, u inverse cos of a half is pi over 3. 
Alrighty then, so we got the integral. Uh, root 2 gave us pi over 4. And then this gave me pi over 3. Now, don't be alarmed. This number is bigger than this one. But you must keep the order. Yeah, we'll deal with that in a second. 1 over x squared. When you square that, you get 4 cos squared u root. Now, you guys don't have to show this if you don't want to. We get 4 minus 4 cos squared u. And we're timesing that by dx, which we wrote before as minus 2 sine u. All right. This minus... We can get rid of that, and then you can switch the limits. So I knew this was going to happen. So we're going to switch the limits, get rid of that minus. So it becomes pi over 3, pi over 4, 1 over 4 cos squared u times. Now this, you all know that 1 minus cos squared u is sine squared u. So if I times it all by 4, it's 4 sine squared u which when you root it, becomes 2 sine u times 2 sine u du. Okay? So that just goes, mate, which is beautiful. That one quarter I'm going to take outside the integral. What else happening? This 1 over cos squared becomes sec squared. The integral sec squared, we think about what differentiates to sex, uh, to sex, what differentiates to sex squared is tan mate. So we've got tan u, pi over 3, pi over 4, we get a quarter of, tan of pi over 3 is root 3, and when you sum in that, you get 1. And that, my friends, is our answer. Happy baking. Right, back to school, nursery vibes. You're probably going to be studying something like this. Someone actually sent this to me on TikTok. It was from someone's video. It was to differentiate this nice and simple white. We're going to rewrite it first as we don't like roots. We like powers, isn't it? Uh, actually, I'm not going to write the whole thing again. So roots means power half, right? Here we're cubing sine, but we have the power half. So we're going to multiply these together, 3 over 2. This is a power function, so we need to rewrite this as an explicit power function like this, e to the x, then I use a square bracket sine of cos x, all to the power of 3 over 2. You guys should know by now I call these things uh, pavan functions. So how do you differentiate this? We're going to use product rule because we're multiplying two functions together. So let's do that. How does it work? You differentiate the first term, e to the x differentiates to itself, multiply by the second term plus differentiate the second term. This is where things get juicy, mate. How do we differentiate Pavan functions? Well, the first thing you do, well, in general, you bring down the power, not one off the power, but you have to adjust for the fact that there's something going on inside. So we need to differentiate that first. So we have to differentiate sine of cos x first. To do that, you differentiate the angle. Cos x differentiates to minus sine x. I'm going to put a bracket here. So you have minus sine x. Sine differentiates to cos. Then the angle stays the same. Okay, so that's the differential what's inside. Then we bring down the power, not one off the power. Now most likely I'm going to run out of space. So I'm going to move over here. So you have minus sine x, cos x, cos of cos x, sorry. Times, bring down the power, then not quite off the power. So this doesn't change. So we have sine of cos x uh, to the power. What have I done here? Sine of cos x. So I brought down the power. I'm going to not quite off the power. I'll do a little recap at the end, innit? Uh, then you times by the first term. So I differentiated this times this plus differentiated this times this. Okay. Uh, where's my rubber? Let's get rid of this now, because it moves stuff around. Okay, before I move on, just to remind you guys, how did I do this? So this differential here, I wanted to differentiate this function. Yeah, so it's a power function. You differentiate what's inside first. You differentiate the angle, boom. Sine differentiates to cos, angle stays the same. Then very simply, as a power function, you bring down the power, knock one off the power. You can see that here. 
Yeah, I brought down the three over two. They stayed the same, knocked one off the power. And to be honest, that's really it. I mean, if you want, you can do some factorizing. Should I show you guys how to factorize something like this? You can see there's an e to the x uh, in both terms. Just to make it easier for you guys to see, I'm gonna cross it out so you don't focus on it anymore. You can also see this being the same in both terms. Now, when we factorize, we always take out the smaller power of this one. So we're gonna take out sine of cos x to the power of a half. I'm gonna write root because it's just gonna look cuter, isn't it? So we've taken out this. Uh, okay. What would be left? This thing here, when you factorize out power half, you're subtracting the powers. Three over two minus a half is one. So you'd be left with sine of cos x. But there's also one more thing I wanna factorize. Do you see there's a fraction here? I don't like the over two. I'm gonna factorize out a half. Okay. So now let's see what's left. So we took out the e to the x, I crossed out this, remember? You factorize out this, so we subtract the powers. Three over two minus a half is one. So we're left with sine of cos x. But don't forget, I factorized out a half as well, so you need to double this. Because now when you expand that half in, there's no more. Okay, remember we took this out. So we're left with minus three, minus three, sine of cos cos x. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Can we check? Yeah, you can. So, <laughs> that's it. Nice.